In the following video, we're going to communicate to our to our PLC from our HMI, but we'll, this time we'll be using a transceiver, uh, a transceiver that that can work with Modbus. So we're going to communicate the, the, through using Modbus through radio frequency. So first of all, let me show you the the hardware that I have installed. Let me put on my camera. And these are the mod modules that I'm using. There's a transceiver. The, the model number is E63DTU500. So first of all, uh, let's uh, configure uh, our modules. So to, in order to do that, we need to set up uh, here. Let me, first of all, let, let me walk you to through the different ports on, on this mo module. So on this module, you have uh, the RS-232 communication, or you can use a um, RS-485 communication. And this time we're going to use the 485 port. So you have phase A and phase B. So on your PLC, uh, the the positive side is going to be connected to phase A and the negative side is going to be connected to phase B okay so then on, on the side you have your input input power which can work with 8 volts or 25 volts of direct uh, current also on the side you have these uh, two deep switches. So in order to configure the, the mode that your transceiver is going to be working on and your, your antenna. So in order to do the, the configuration, uh, you need to set up a deep switch one for, for this specific model to be off. So we're going to change that. So it's um, pin number one. It's off, and pin and deep switch number two, it's on. Okay, so once we have once we have that setup, I'm going to uh, connect my module to my PC. So this is a USB to serial cable, and I'm just going to plug it in to my PC. And once I, I plug plug it in, then I'm going to go. And I'm going to to run the configuration as, um, program. You can get this for free from the web from the website where you got your your um, transceivers. And for this specific uh, model, the E63, uh, they ask you to run the this one. So I'm going to double click it, and I'm going to click here to change it uh, to English. And we're going to select the port number, which is uh, COM4. I know it's COM4. And you can use a uh, device manager to figure out figure out which uh, communication port you, you created when you connect the, the USB cable. I'm going to click and open. And operate on timeout. Okay. Let me go, go check. I have make sure it's off. Make sure that's in and then make sure it's port 4 and uh, I have it connected very good so let me double check operation timeout let me just uh, disconnect my my USB cable and plug it in again still should be four. there you go okay so now uh, these are the settings so which is in chinese so on one of their manual they have the same uh, uh, screen in english so let's use that as a as a reference okay so first is the id the id is uh, 1000 the communication para parameters it's data bit 8, even parity, stop bit uh, 1. 
So those those are not the usual default parameters on our PLCs. Our default one is starts with the seven. So there's no option here to put the data bit in seven. So we going to select one. I'm going to select this one. Uh, data bit eight, even parity, stop bit one. So I'm going to select that one. And then uh, here there's the write, read, write, and the factory set settings. So I just selected this one and I'm going to go to write. Click write and the config configuration has been uh, uh, transferred to my module. <laughs> I'm going to hit, click on and OK. Very good. So and I'm going to do the same thing with my other uh, transceiver. So they should have the same uh, communication parameters. So let me unplug that. And I, I already did that on this one. So I label each um, uh, uh, transceiver with the bound rate and the communication par parameters. The parameters. So they should be the, the same. And then I'm just going to put my deep switches back to on. And this way, we're going to be sending data and also receiving data from one another. Very good. And we see that they're right now they're 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 communicating. Okay. So next, let's um, configure our PLC. This PLC. So right now I'm using a Delta DVP a series uh, SS2. So in order to configure that, we're going to open ISP soft. And I'm using right now the, the RS232 port to configure my, P, my PLC. So I'm just going to go and upload. And I have some videos that can show you how to, to uh, connect to your PLC. So right now I'm uploading my, my program. And then on my programs, and the, the first one that I have is a, like a, I just say, name it as a startup setup. So I'm going to double click. And as a startup, uh, here I'm going to configure my RS485 port. So I'm going to uh, put the the contactor M um, 1002, and this contactor is going to be on for one scan cycle of your PLC. Whenever you uh, turn on your PLC, M M uh, 1002 is going to be activated for one scan cycle, and that will configure your your PLC. So let's let, let, let me walk you through every each of the different parameters that you need to 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 set up. Uh, first is the communication settings, which is um, uh, designed by D1120. D1120 is going to 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 receive what 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 the what are the communicator communication settings of your PLC. So let me open my manual. And these are the parameters that we need. As a bound rate, we need needed to be uh, 960, uh, 9,600. The stop bit should be one. The parity should be even. And the data length should be eight. So let me open my calculator. Oh, sorry. Calculator. Okay. So let's start with the most significant uh, value. So which is this one. So we want uh, to be 9600. So then we need to to add to to write down this number is one zero 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 then we want our stop bit to be one bit so one bit you need we need to add a zero 
we got zero. Uh, also, sorry, my, my mistake. Mm, let me reset. Uh, you need to go to binary. Go to binary, and then you just start thousand, and then zero. Very good. So we're here. Then we need to the party. We uh, we want it to be even, so we need to add one and a one, one and one. And the data length, we need it to be um, eight data bit. So we need to add a one. There you go. So these are the the communication uh, settings that we need. So in decimal is this one 135, and hexadecimal is this one 87. So we want to work on on this time with hex hexadecimal, which is uh, 70, 87. Okay. That's why we're going to send. We're going to move 87 in hexadecimal. This is this one, what hexadecimal means, 16, and the pound number, and then the value. We're going to send this value to the 1120. So that's, that, that's how we're, we're going to set up the communication parameters. Then uh, the D1129 is the timeout. So we are going, going to add um, 100 milliseconds of timeout. Then the 1121 is going to be a communication address, the address of our PLC. We are going to set the, this PLC with the uh, address number two. So from now on, our PLC is going to have the address number two. And M1120, uh, this is to retain the communication um, settings. So pretty much, if once you set up, set this number, this uh, memory, and then once you uh, put it on on, and the param communication parameters are going to stay the, the same, even even if they change during the course of your program, they're going to stay the, the same, and then that, that's just a, as a protection. If something happened during the program that you change the the communication parameters, you're not going to lose a uh, connection. And then the M1130, uh, 1143. And those are to either set your your PLC uh, com to be working as in ASCII mode or in RTU. So right now we're going to start, uh, we're going to work with ASCII. So that's why you have to put it on reset. If it is off, we're work, working on ASCII. If it's on, we're going to work with RTU. So right now we're going to go to work with ASCII. So once we have that set up, then let's move, out, move to the main program, which is this one is very simple and it's very simple. So pretty much we have an M0 a contactor with the label with the address M0. If that contactor is on and the output Y1 is going to be activated. If M1 is um, uh, activated, then let's put this to be the output to be 2. If M1 is activated, the output number 2 is going to be activated. So we're going to download that to our PLC. We're going to transfer the, the the program to our PLC, and then we're going to put it on. Uh, we're going to put it on run, and we're going to go online. Very good. Okay, so now the next thing is to set up our. We have our PLC all set up. Then we need to figure out and configure our HMI and our operator uh, panel. Okay, so now to configure that, we're going to disconnect this one for a moment. And we're going to connect our operator panel, our PLC, uh, our HMI to our computer. 
So in order to do that, I'm going to use the uh, USB to serial port converter and I'm going to use um, the the cable to connect and, and on, a, on, on another video I'll show you how to create the, this, how to build this cable. So it's just uh, something to, to connect from your uh, serial port to your HMI. So we have it uh, connected. So it's connected. Then we're going to use a OP20 to start uh, making a, a new program. So I'm going to go to new project. I'm going to select the model of my operator panel. I'm going to select the model of my PLC. And then I'm going to go to settings. And for the bound bound rate, I'm going to use this one, the 9600, 9, and the data bit, it's eight. The start bit is one, and the parity it's seven. So I click OK, and then OK, and then I'm going to put an indicator on on this side, small indicator. I'm, I'm going to make it large. And the PLC station, we said that it was uh, PLC station number two. The coil is going to be coil M0. It's in, in, I'm going just for this one, I'm going to make it a square. And then I'm going to, that's an indicator. And then I'm going to put a, a, fun, a function key. So whenever we click the function key number, um, Let's make it two. Whenever I press the function, the 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 the, the key number two, then we're going the coil that we're going to set up to activate on our PLC address number two is going to be M one, and we're going to set it as a momentary on. So whenever we're pressing the key number two. M1 is going to be activated. So that's our simple program. And then let's download it to our operated panel. So it's all set. Very good. I'm going to minimize. Very good. So right now, uh, the screen is not showing any of the indicator or the or, or or the function key because uh, we haven't connected to to our PLC yet. Okay. So now let me remove this. Disconnect it. Very good. And I'm going to connect the uh, RS four eighty five cable to my HMI. Okay. So it's connected. And the LEDs start to to flash, so that there, there's a connection back and forth from my HMI to my to my PLC. So now let me uh, open ISP Soft. I'm going to minimize it. Okay. So whenever I uh, activate uh, M0, our indicator on our HMI is going to be activated. Set it off. And set up. And we, whenever we press the key number two, M one M one is going to be activated. There you go. And that's how we can uh, transfer uh, uh, any data back and forth using our our um, our uh, the transceiver using the radio radio frequency and actually these transceivers uh, according to the, spe the specification can transmit over i think it's a little bit more than than two kilometers so it's it's it's, it's practical and you can i bet you can use you can make a may may make use of, uh, of, of that uh, capability of of, of these uh, transceivers and they're actually on the same brand 
on the same brand there are, there's other mod mod module that can work work I think the over six kilometers, but but this one is uh, uh, it's a long distance but it's short compared to the uh, to 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 the other ones that that from the same brand that can transmit over longer distance, and that that's pretty much it for 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 this uh, presentation. Thank you so much for 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 watching. Remember that you can subscribe to my channel. You can recommend my channel to any of your friends that can, they, they, especially if you know that they can benefit from this kind of uh, videos. So thank you so much. Give it a like if you if you like this video, and I'll see you next time. Th thank you so much.